to replace this compressor. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut those like that. And that way I can slide this stuff off. Got all the uh, pipes cut, because otherwise it's really tight in place. It's really hard to get it out. So that way it makes it easier to slide it off. All right, all you super techs out there. I like to use a flame that's big enough to get me on and off of the piece that I'm working on as quickly as possible without overheating the copper. Any guy that has any ideas whether or not there's something wrong, that's the oil out of that compressor. That's really looking bad. So yeah, that compressor's toast. You can see shavings, you can see a little everything in there. Now I chose not to use the RX11 flush for a reason. I've been having some issues when I've used it that it ends up creating capillary tubes plugging up later. So in this instance here, I didn't have any uh, oil in the condenser coil, so I was pretty confident that we'd be all right. Just reusing this. I used it the last time. So we'll just put it back on there again. It protected it that long. Basically this takes care of the penetration through the cabinet and also any potential vibrations later on down the line. Here I am getting the feed in place and pinned back together and undoing the suction line. Now we're just making sure there's nothing left in the condenser. Going ahead and getting our hot gas line braised back in. Here we're purging out the suction line back towards the coil. And in the last time I uh, wrapped the capillary tube around the accumulator here. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it around there just to help boil off any leftover refrigerant that's in the accumulator. Then we'll bring it back around and stick it into the evaporator about two to three inches. That's a capillary tube cutter that I used to cut it. Works really well. They didn't really give you instructions that you could read. So I had to get the ohm meter out and figure out which one's what. This is really useful when they don't tell you what terminal's what on here. Which, yeah, you have an end there, but don't see anything else. So it's always good to take a couple seconds to make sure you're correct before wiring it up. That way it's better to be sure than it is to be sorry. These don't really fit the barrel quite right, but the blues are almost too big. So what I'm doing is sleeving it with a piece of heat shrink. That'll help hold it in place and it won't short out against anything. Basically, we got our common going on with the capacitor here, the other side of the capacitor going there. This is your start, this is your run. Your common's gonna get your hot leg. And then uh, when the thing kicks on, the magnetic pull because of the amperage causes this switch to pull up. And then as soon as the amperage drops down, it opens up and takes the capacitor out of the circuit. That's for you and the guys. That's why if you flip it upside down, you can kind of get continuity through the start and the uh, run that the uh, switch is closing. And since we're doing electrical, I'll go ahead and do my disclaimer now. This is not for homeowners and business owners or anyone else. This is for trained, competent, professional HVAC refrigeration service technicians. So please don't try this on your own. There we go. Check that out. It's hard to believe it actually fit. And there's that. And of course they didn't give me no screws for it because they didn't give me no crimpons either. I've got nitrogen purging through my compressor the whole time I'm doing this because this has turned into a lot longer than it should have. So we'll go ahead and get that mounted there. I've got two self-tapping screws in there and that 
ran them down slow back in and out and that made them tap into that plastic just perfect. Purging some nitrogen through right now. Get all the air out. They're down to breeze mode. What I ended up doing too, um, got it all in place and then I killed the nitrogen right after, right before I ended up hitting it one last time just to warm it up one more time just to make sure no nitrogen was blowing any holes through it even though it's super slow. It's not brazed over there but it could cause it back pressure and blow it out. Now when we bleed it through this is going to push through the suction side and so from here to here is wide open so it's going to just go on through and on out. Uh, to the coil. You're also going to get some back here to where the filter dryer comes out at. I get any shavings or anything out of there one last time just to make certain. We're going to go oversize Cap TT dryer because that wheel's so bad. And right there you can see that 134A you had three extra ounces. Plus it gives me two ports like I see before and after. It won't stop anything waxy or anything like that because uh, I've had uh, two times where I've changed this and it keeps going back and getting plugged up. We ended up having to yank the oil out and flushing the system and everything else. So being this one's not getting plugged up, we didn't do the flush. We just blew it out with nitrogen, pretty much bypassed the regulator to get the pressure I wanted to really blow through it. Nothing came out, so we're good there. And the reason why we're using a small quarter inch piece of tubing in between the dryer and the line coming out of the condenser coil is because it was some weird off size that I did not have on the truck and I had no fittings to adapt it. Right now I'm bleeding through higher than normal pressure through here. Wet your finger, you can feel it plain as day. And any higher than that, you can hear it. So I'm one notch down below. I bled everything through here. So now any restrict, you know, any back pressure from this being restricted is going to come through here. We're just displacing the oxygen. searching with the ultrasonic right now and it's the gooseneck version. I really like the other one but this one here really gets you in nice tight spots. I'm not hearing anything and I noticed for some reason this one here seems to be a lot quieter than my other one. I bought my other one used so I wonder if that's maybe why they sold it because this one isn't picking up the fluorescent lights near as bad and uh, I mean I'm not hearing nothing but just you know, every time now and again when I hit something. Pulled down pretty low on that. We valved it off once or twice. Just getting the last bits of uh, air moisture out of it. And we're going to get her charged up here in a second. It's actually running pretty good. My head pressure was, uh, I think, 135, 140. I had my stubby gauge on there and ended up taking that off. Um, got it all back into place. This is easier to get to now. Coming back a little bit cold. It's not uh, flooding back or anything like that. And uh, she looks good and she's working good. So that wraps this one up. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Check down below the description for any of the tools I was using. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Hey.